Hey everyone, CPO here, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do a bench calibration of voltage of an IS-20 wastegate actuator. So I'm swapping the wastegate from my IS-38 turbo to my new Beta XXL EQT turbo. It's a 660 size turbo. Anyway, uh, I need to move the wastegate actuator over. Uh, fun fact, the IS-38 on the 2019 model Golf R uses an IS-20 style actuator. So uh, usually those are reserved for the IS-20 turbos that you might find in a GTI, but uh, at some point they made a change and started putting the IS-20 style actuators in the IS-38 turbos. All right, now that we got that out of the way, the issue is with the IS-20 style actuator, you normally would want to check voltage with the turbo installed and the engine running. Uh, but I don't wanna do that because I don't wanna to wait to install the turbo to adjust the wastegate. And I certainly don't wanna to have to reach back there and do that adjustment with the turbo installed. So I'm gonna do it on the bench and I'm gonna show you how. If you were doing this process on an IS-38 style actuator, and you would know that because it would look physically and distinctively different than this one, it, it looks completely different. So if it looks different, you probably have the IS-38 version. The process is exactly the same actually, except you don't have to manually force closed the actuator like we're gonna do here coming up. You can just apply power with the power source and it will be in the closed position. You could just check voltage without having to do anything else. Alternatively, you can also do it in the car uh, and I'll show you that here in a second as well. But right now I'm just getting this wastegate actuator installed into the new turbo. That's a little bit of anti-seize and yeah, we'll be ready to go here in a second. So the reason why the IS-20 bench calibration is tricky is because the turbo doesn't close when it's powered. You have to force it closed. Now, when it's in the car, when you turn on the car uh, and the engine's running, it does close. What we're gonna do is force close it and then check the voltage in the process. All right, so I just initially set the wastegate until it was, uh, until the flap was closed and then we'll finish it with the multimeter. All right, so here's what I'm working with here. I have this cable from CTS Turbo, which I'll explain here in a minute. This is not necessary, but it is helpful and I'll show you why. Uh, I need a power source that puts out five volts and I need a multimeter. All right, so this cable is uh, from CTS Turbo. It's designed to bench adjust a IS-38, uh, which is what I thought I had, uh, actuator, which means you can do it without it being in the car. Uh, it's a long cable, you can just connect it up to the car, turn the ignition on, and then you're getting basically the opportunity to read the voltage uh, on the car. I'm gonna cut that off and I'm just gonna use it as a way to connect to certain pins on the wastegate actuator, and I will show you those. The colors that I'm using for this harness doesn't really matter, and probably most of you aren't gonna have this harness, so you're gonna have to figure out how to connect to these pins, maybe little tiny alligator clips or make your own uh, connections or what have you. So pin number one is going to be for our five volt power source, five volt DC power source. So that's why we're using a five volt USB charging adapter. So could be an iPhone charger, could be an Android charger. Uh, in my case, it's some random uh, charger I had in a parts bin, but the key is it needs to be five volt and I'll show you that here in a second. Pin number three, is going to be ground. You're gonna connect both the power source ground and the multimeter negative side to that pin three. And then number five is going to be the positive lead for your multimeter. So those three pins are being used. The other two pins won't be used in this process. Those are for motor control that we're not gonna need for setting the voltage. All right, so with that said, uh, pin number one, pin number two, and pin number three, uh, I'm gonna, set those up. Now here's my wall wart. Uh, this is an Ultimate Ears uh, headphone adapter, but basically what you're looking for is that output that it says it is five volts at whatever amperage it's gonna be, two amps, whatever. The amperage really doesn't matter for this process, but the, the output needs to be five volts. That'll be regulated five volt power supply. It uses a USB cable, so I'm just gonna sacrifice an old USB mini cable because I have a bazillion of these laying around and uh, I don't use most of them anymore. Most everything has moved to USB-C or micro USB by now. So uh, what I'm gonna do is just strip this down and get it to the point where I have the positive lead and the negative lead. Now I don't need all these other wires, so I'm just gonna make sure that they're out of the way and not touching anything. Uh, those are data wires for the USB cable. But the red wire and the black wire give me 
five volts, right? I have the positive and the negative, and as seen with my multimeter, uh, I get five volts. So that's what I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna connect my five volt positive lead to pin number one, uh, as we talked about before. And I'll show you a diagram here again so you can see that. I'm gonna connect the ground to the actuator ground. So there we go. Now my power supply is not plugged in at this point, but uh, ground to ground, uh, red to pin number one, and then now I'm connecting my positive lead from the multimeter to pin number five on the actuator. And then I'm gonna connect the ground from the multimeter to that ground pin, which is number three on the, uh, on the, the solenoid wires. So here's a quick diagram. This is what was sent to me uh, to do this process. So again, uh, pin number one, is going to be your positive voltage from the power source. Pin number three is gonna be the ground for both your power source and your multimeter. And pin number five is gonna be the positive from your multimeter. And so what we're targeting is 3.5 volts. I've seen several different ranges, usually about 3.4 to 3.8. So people target 3.5 to 3.6. I targeted 3.5 in this process and it worked out just fine. All right, so now that I have that set up, I'm gonna plug in the power source and you can see the voltage is showing as 1.18 volts. And that is the actuator in its rested position, uh, which is why we have to make changes. So um, you can see here, I have to close manually the actuator valve and then make an adjustment. And what I'm trying to do is get that to 3.5-ish, right, there I go right there, 3.5, by, by turning in or out that actuator. And once I get it there, I'm gonna lock the lock nut. But that bar uh, will lengthen or shorten accordingly. And so the key here is you have to squeeze it to manually close it. That's where the IS-20 is a pain in the butt because it doesn't do that when you power it on the same way an IS-38 actuator would. So here's another look at how I'm squeezing that, I'm just squeezing against the, the turbo itself uh, to put some back pressure on the actuator until it closes. And that's where I'm reading the voltage. So there you go, 3.5, I locked it in there. Then once we get that done, after we get the turbo installed and everything is good to go, what we wanna do is do a first time adaptation of the wastegate. So I'm gonna connect, in my case using OBD11, and I'm going to go to basic settings, and then I'm just gonna do a quick search for first adaptation charge pressure actuator, whatever you want, I put an F and it showed up, and I'm just going to uh, run that basic setting. Now the ignition has to be on, and the car has to be not running for this process. Now if you wanted to check your voltage on this particular actuator, you would look for the charge pressure actuator acknowledgement, that one will put the voltage on there. When you're doing this in the car with the install on the turbo, you need to have the car running for this process. So car running to check voltage, car not running, but ignition on to do the first adaptation. So here we are, turbo's in, car's running, and then I'm getting 3.6 volts. So I got pretty close by just squeezing it by hand. There are some ways to manually force it close without the engine running using OBD11 or VCDS, but it's not necessary for me because I just bench adjusted it while it was on the table. So that's my process. By the way, if you have an IS-38, you can get that, that uh, extension cable from CTS Turbo, and that will allow you to just plug it into the car uh, and then plug it into the turbo you know, nearby on a bench, turn on the ignition, and then you can use OBD-11 to read the voltage as if it was installed in the car, but it's not. So uh, two ways to skin that cat, but hopefully this helps those of you who are looking to bench adjust an IS-20 turbo wastegate actuator. Thanks for watching guys. I'll catch you on the next one.